Hey folks, we're back to building. Actually, to be clear, I've never stopped. I'm still building, uh, but it's just one of those things that uh, it's taking longer and longer to produce these videos, and I'm just taking my sweet time getting to it. And in this video, you're going to be seeing me continue to work on the horizontal stabilizer, get things hooked up on the back of the plane, vertical stabilizer too. Very exciting. So I've actually had a lot of different people ask me um, over the course of this video process exactly how I go about uh, producing these videos. They do take a heck of a lot of time. And a lot of people ask me, I said, you know, is it is it worth it? Is it one of those things that you enjoy doing? Um, does it add some extra time? And, you know, the answer is, yeah, it adds a lot of extra time. Uh, it takes me three, four, five hours sometimes to put together all the video. Um, which is pretty crazy, really, if you think about it. I mean, if you add five hours to a task, right, that's a lot of time. But I don't sweat it. I actually do enjoy it. Uh, it is one of those things that, uh, for me, you know, it allows me to go back and review what I've done and, and kind of contribute to the community and talk to people. Uh, so <clears throat> I wanted to give you guys a heads up of exactly how I do this. Um, first of all, I have several of these little GoPro-like cameras. They're called JVC Addictions. And I generally have one, you know, pointed at me uh, and, you know, what I'm doing. And I have another one that's off in the distance pointing just in a general direction. That's my B-roll, right? Uh, so it, it just gives me a lot of different footage to use. And honestly, I throw away... I mean, at least half the footage, right? Because one camera, even though I'll be filming the same thing twice, I don't use it all. And so that's generally what I do. I then import all the video into uh, a, a video editing solution. In this case, I'm using Adobe Premiere. There are many different solutions out there. I like Premiere just because I've been using it for years. It does have limitations uh, and it can be expensive. Uh, and then audio-wise, I record using this mic. This is a Rode 5 Podcaster mic. It, it normally would have a big uh, spit shield right here in front of it, but I just don't like that thing, so I don't, I don't use it, even though the sound is clearer and crisper. So, yeah, that's it. I import it all, and then I go through and I cut the video. I'll show you that. I go through and I cut the video, and you can see along here all the different cuts I've made to, uh, you know, do what I need to do. So yeah, it's, it's a process, and if it's one you're thinking of doing, just know it ain't a quick process. But I mean, really, what is in this plane building journey uh, that we're on, right? None of this is fast, so eh, why not bite the bullet, jump in both feet, and really do it. So getting back to the actual plane, here you see I've got the horizontal stabilizer mounted and, and I'm cleaning up the area there and uh, I demounted it temporarily to, to deburr the holes and make sure everything was smooth and clean. But yeah, this was an interesting thing. Once you get it mounted and set in there, uh, you have to make sure it is perpendicular to the rest of the plane and that's one of those things I had to get my wife to help me do. You basically just run a, a ruler or a string or something from the corner to corner uh, and up up to a point in the middle of the fuselage and just make sure it's the same distance to make sure, you know, for, for perpendicular sakes, and it, it was. So, uh, luckily, got to just basically drill it in. I think I had to move it like half a degree or something like that. It was really minor. And the way they, they have you do it with a block of wood is actually kind of clever. So, easy peasy, no big deal. That silver piece you see me working with right there is the vertical stabilizer front spar attachment bracket. And it's slightly bent. Make sure it's bent backwards. It's bent towards the aft of the plane, not towards the front of the plane. And that'll become important when you put the vertical stabilizer on. Like this. Holy crap. It starts getting tight back there, by the way. Um, you, you have those little windows uh, to work with and, and you know, there's there's several times where I've had to reach in there and, you know, get a washer or something that I, you know, s slipped through my chubby fingers and boy, it's tight in there. There's not a lot of room. So uh, yeah, you have to do things in a very specific order and just accept that at some point you might drop something not be able to get it until later. Also, something else that's interesting is the plane is rapidly approaching the point where it's no longer, you know, manhandleable by one person. Um, I, I couldn't lower this thing to the ground 
as it is now, especially towards the end. And we'll we'll get to that in a minute when you uh, actually see it. But yeah, it's it's to the point now where you know my wife could lift the front up there, at, but it would take me to lift the back of it. And it's it's not that it's so much heavy as it is just really bulky and awkward. So time to uh, invest in some friends. Uh, beer and hot dogs, I recommend it. So here I'm using, you'll see me, I'm pulling a little little pieces of painter's tape. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using the painter's tape and sticking it to a washer so I can stick my arm in there and lower the painter's tape slightly beyond my finger so that when I put the bolt in, the washer slides, you know, the bolt slides through the washer. What a pain in the ass. Uh, I did get some uh, washer wrenches uh, and you should get some. Here, this is where we had a lesson in gravity, and I realized I put the uh, elevator on the left side. I'm like, oh, wow, this whole thing wanted to lean over and fall off onto the floor. I better do something about that. So, uh, yeah, I put some weights on the right side temporarily while I grabbed a box and stuck it under there. Uh, and here I'm attaching the other elevator. So uh, I need to come up with a way to, like, firmly root the plane to my stands uh, so they won't lean and fall over it's it's really a kind of a non-issue except for that one instance where you you've got an elevator on one side you know weight on one side and not on the other here you see me using those wrenches i talk about those ratchet wrenches man those made life easy uh this was fun so this is another situation of getting tiny little washers into a very teeny space between those elevator horns and that uh bearing and that was another one that I got it done but having those uh, having those those washer wrenches would have been easier now that I've got them yeah it's trivial this is the beginning of the work of the push rod assembly uh, so the, the push rod is is just a tube that runs the entire length of the empennage and you've you've got these two different um, cone-shaped threaded inserts that you have to, you know, just jam in the, you know, in the bottom of them and uh, you'll do riveting around them. You know, you'll create a, a piece of paper, which is what I'm doing here, wrap it around the tube and, <clears throat> you know, put six evenly spaced holes and then you'll drill through to make your final push rod assembly. Uh, it's clever, actually, how it works. Again, it's one of those things that, huh, they thought about this. And, uh, yeah, it works really well. Also, they highly recommend, and I do too, that you prime the inside of that tube. And I don't show that on camera, uh, but, yeah, I, I literally went out into the yard and primed, just sprayed primer down that tube until it ran out the other side. Uh, and that... I get, you know, it's one of those things you should do because there is no way to inspect the inside of that thing once you seal it, which I'm doing here. And yeah, those are just pop rivets on those. Once I get that all done, I go back to the back of the plane and start figuring out how I'm going to get the rudder horns, the bottoms of the rudder horns, th you know, threaded uh, together with a bolt through each horn and through that uh, push rod assembly. And then there's washers on the outside and in the on the inside between the uh, bearing and the horns themselves. And it took me a long, I, I couldn't figure out how the heck am I supposed to do this? Uh, and I will, I will talk to that here shortly. Um, Long story short is you make one, flip one up and put one the, the other one down and it's actually incredibly easy. Um, and then I start on hanging the rudder. Uh, you know, this thing looks more and more like an airplane every day. Get the rudder, uh, again, you get that little eye bolt uh, washer system that they've got going there. You get it all threaded in and then you go to the back of the plane and you hang it just like you hang the elevators. It's the exact same process except there are three of them instead of two of them. So what they recommend you do is you get the top one and the bottom one lined up and then you line up the middle one to to match th those other two, which is definitely the best way to go forward. And I will let me from the past talk to you guys about exactly, you know, what happened and why it was a minor uh, victory. Hey folks, so something I wanted to show you guys was uh, I've had a minor victory in that if you remember when I hung the elevators uh, there was binding and of course I, I fixed that with a lot of 
uh, judicious effort of these hinges and bolts screwing them in and out. Well, there's the same thing here, here, and down here on the rudder, and I, I have no binding way up there at top, which is awesome. So this is perfectly smooth travel, and for whatever reason, it's almost perfect right here. I need to screw this guy out one screw in order to get the whole thing to line up perfectly. Luck of luck, because this could have been one of those things that was horrible. Speaking of horrible, another issue I had earlier was, if you see down in there, I've got the rudder horns, which are these two guys right here, and then you've got the pushrod assembly, which runs the whole length of the empennage, and getting the two washers into there between each rudder horn and the uh, hinge was very difficult until I asked the folks on the forums and they said, you know, uh, dummy, if you just, well, they didn't say dummy, but they should have. If you just loosen this bolt right here, then you can swing this one up and this one down and you have all the access in the world to that. As you might imagine, I felt like an idiot because I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me to do that. Thank you, Vans Forum. Um, yeah, it's really great to have access to other people because sometimes you look at something a hundred times, a thousand times, and you, you look at it the same way, and somebody else comes along and like, eh, have you thought of this? And no, I hadn't. So anyways, I'm excited. Gonna get this guy twisted and turned to the correct, and uh, you know, the correct amount. Like I said, it should just come out. I mean, just one turn of the screw should be enough for me to drop that bolt through there. And then we've got our rudder hung. That's awesome. It's really starting to look like an airplane. Yeah, it is. Thanks, guys.